We are now entering part two of the workbook with this introduction. Words will mean little now. We use them but as guides on which we do not now depend. For now we seek direct experience of truth alone. The lessons that remain are merely introductions to the times in which we leave the world of pain and go to enter peace. Now we begin to reach the goal this course has set and find the end toward which our practicing was always geared. Now we attempt to let the exercise be merely a beginning, for we wait in quiet expectation for our God and Father. He has promised he will take the final step himself, and we are sure his promises are kept. We have come far along the road, and now we wait for him. We will continue spending time with him each morning and at night as long as makes us happy. We will not consider time a matter of duration now, we use as much as we will need for the result that we desire. Nor will we forget our hourly remembrance in between, calling to God when we have need of Him, as we are tempted to forget our goal. We will continue with a central thought for all the days to come, and we will use that thought to introduce our times of rest and calm our minds at need. Yet we will not content ourselves with simple practicing in the remaining holy instants which conclude the year that we have given God. We say some simple words of welcome and expect our Father to reveal himself as he has promised. We have called on him and he has promised that his Son will not remain unanswered when he calls his name. Now do we come to him with but his word upon our minds and hearts, and wait for him to take the step to us that he has told us through his voice he would not fail to take when we invited him. He has not left his son in all his madness, nor betrayed his trust in him. Has not his faithfulness earned him the invitation that he seeks to make us happy? We will offer it, and it will be accepted. So our times with him will now be spent. We say the words of invitation that his voice suggests, and then we wait for him to come to us. Now is the time of prophecy fulfilled. Now are all ancient promises upheld and fully kept. No step remains for time to separate from its accomplishment. For now, we cannot fail. Sit silently and wait upon your Father. He has willed to come to you when you have recognized it is your will he do so. And you could never come this far unless you saw, however dimly, that it is your will. I am so close to you, we cannot fail. Father, We give these holy times to you in gratitude to him who taught us how to leave the world of sorrow in exchange for its replacement given us by you. We look not backward now. We look ahead and fix our eyes upon the journey's end. Accept these little gifts of thanks from us as through Christ's vision we behold a world beyond the one we made and take that world to be the full replacement of our own. And now we wait in silence, unafraid and certain of your coming. We have sought to find our way by following the guide you sent to us. We did not know the way, but you did not forget us. And we know that you will not forget us now. We ask, but that your ancient promises be kept, which are your will to keep. We will with you in asking this. The Father and the Son, whose holy will created all that is, can fail in nothing. In this certainty, we undertake these last few steps to you and rest in confidence upon your love, which will not fail the Son who calls to you. And so we start upon the final part of this 
one holy year which we have spent together in search for truth and God, who is its one creator. We have found the way he chose for us and made the choice to follow it as he would have us go. His hand has held us up. His thoughts have lit the darkness of our minds. His love has called to us unceasingly since time began. We had a wish that God would fail to have the Son whom he created for himself. We wanted God to change himself and be what we would make of him. And we believed that our insane desires were the truth. Now we are glad that this is all undone and we no longer think illusions true. The memory of God is shimmering across the wide horizons of our minds. A moment more, and it will rise again. A moment more, and we who are God's sons are safely home where he would have us be. Now is the need for practice almost done, for in this final section we will come to understand that we need only call to God and all the temptations disappear. Instead of words, we need but feel his love. Instead of prayers, we need but call his name. Instead of judging, we need but be still and let all things be healed. We will accept the way God's plan will end as we recede the way it started. Now it is complete. This year has brought us to eternity. One further use for words we still retain. From time to time, instructions on a theme of special relevance will intersperse our daily lessons and the periods of wordless, deep experience which should come afterwards. These special thoughts should be reviewed each day, each one of them to be continued till the next is given you. They should be slowly read and thought about a little while, preceding one of the holy and blessed instants in the day. We give the first of these instructions now. What is forgiveness? Forgiveness recognizes what you thought your brother did to you has not occurred. It does not pardon sins and make them real. It sees there was no sin. And in that view are all your sins forgiven. What is sin except a false idea about God's Son? Forgiveness merely sees its falsity and therefore lets it go. What then is free to take its place is now the will of God. An unforgiving thought is one which makes a judgment that it will not raise to doubt, although it is not true. The mind is closed and will not be released. The thought protects projection, tightening its chains so that distortions are more veiled and more obscure less easily accessible to doubt and further kept from reason. What can come between a fixed projection and the aim that it is chosen as its wanted goal? An unforgiving thought does many things. In frantic action, it pursues its goal, twisting and overturning what it sees as interfering with its chosen path. Distortion is its purpose and the means by which it would accomplish it as well. It sets about its furious attempts to smash reality without concern for anything that would appear to pose a contradiction to its point of view. Forgiveness, on the other hand, is still and quietly does nothing. It offends no aspect of reality nor seeks to twist it to appearances it likes. It merely looks and waits and judges not. He who would not forgive must judge for he must falsify his failure to forgive. But he who would forgive himself must learn to welcome truth exactly as it is. Do nothing then, and let forgiveness show you what to do. Through him who is your guide, your savior and protector, strong in hope and certain of your ultimate success. He has forgiven you already, for such is his function given him by God. Now must you share his function and forgive whom he has saved, 
whose sinlessness he sees and whom he honors as the Son of God. Lesson 221 from A Course in Miracles. Peace to my mind, let all my thoughts be still. Father, I come to you today to seek the peace that you alone can give. I come in silence in the quiet of my heart. The deep recesses of my mind I wait and listen for your voice, my Father, speak. To me today I come to hear your voice in silence and in certainty and love. Sure you hear my call and answer me. Now do we wait in quiet, God is here. Because we wait together, I am sure that he will speak to you and you will hear. Accept my confidence for it is yours. Our minds are joined, we wait with one intent to hear our Father's answer to our call, to let our thoughts be still and find His peace, to hear Him speak to us of what we are, and to reveal Himself unto His Son. Now for the reflection on Lesson 221. We have begun a new level of our study of enlightenment into the experience. No longer are we in our mind, but we have integrated this information to the point that it is now a living reality within us. And so now we seek but to deepen into the stillness of this transformation And so Jesus in the introduction explains where we are going from here, where we have been and where we are now. And also he begins this first discussion on forgiveness, going so much more deeply and more beautifully into it than ever before by saying forgiveness recognizes what you thought your brother did to you has not occurred. 
This is forgiveness to heal rather than forgiveness to attack. And in the introduction, Jesus puts it so simply, so beautifully, so eloquently, and so unconditionally. What you thought happened did not. Rest in that. Be still. Be confident in that alone. There's no need for you to defend. There's no need for you to attack. Just rest in the understanding that what you thought was was not. And so peace does come to my mind when I allow this realization, this transformation, and all of my thoughts are still. I am quiet. I am peaceful. I am that.